What's going on, everyone? If you're watching this video, you probably bought a set of presets and they're not working as they should or as they promised they will work in your photos. And in this video, I'm going to break down a couple steps that you might have missed before and after you put those presets to work. So let's dive right in and let's learn something new together. So here we are. This is another wedding that I was doing a couple years ago. I like this photo. There's a lot of room for improvement here, but let's just assume that you took a couple photos for whatever reason, whether it was a wedding, quinceanera, whatever the case might be, and you have a couple presets that you want to just slap in and hope, hopefully they'll work, right? What I would do is, and what I suggest everybody to do is before you start tweaking colors, let's work on the composition. So we're going to go to the crop and we're going to set this four by three. And then we're gonna lower this down. We're gonna make sure it's straight. Let's hit auto, it's pretty straight. I did a good job there. So I have the preset pack here, the ultimate preset pack. This, that's my preset pack that I've been selling for a while. Um, if you haven't grabbed it, the link is below. But here's what I don't want you to do. So for example, let's say I pick Warm Wedding or Safari for some reason, and I just hit click. All the settings are immediately applied to this photo. And as you can see, they're not working at all for this photo. But that's what a lot of people get confused. Presets are just a starting point. It's not the end point or the end result. It might be for a lot of photos, but I still like to tweak them around. Even though these are my presets that I created from scratch, when I apply them to a photo, a specific photo, it could be a family photo, it could be a client or whatever the case might be, I always tweak them because each photo is different. It doesn't really matter if you have all your settings uh, nailed down, if you have the perfect lighting, you always tweak a couple things because we like to switch things around. So photos are not the exception. So the first thing I will do, let's say I'm gonna go with this preset, which I'm not actually, but the first thing that you should do is make sure your white balance is as accurate as possible. So I know this was white, so I'm gonna click here. There's some minor changes. So I'm gonna go and cool this photo a little bit to take a little bit of that orange out. And that was one of the first things that I, I would do. Then I will check my histogram right here and I will tweak the exposure if I have to and kind of like go from there, right? But this is not the preset that I'm gonna do. It's not working out for this photo. So there's this preset pack. I have 13 presets. So this is bright and soft, dreamy, uh, dreamy wedding, getaway, goal, Adam, uh, master. Uh, so I think for this particular photo, I'm gonna do the dreamy look. I'm gonna do the dreamy look. I will select again my white, change that a little bit. Um, I can see that the, you know, it's a little bit overexposed, so I'm gonna lower that a little bit. Maybe negative, uh, let me see, keep an eye. And I always tell people, if you are unsure what each setting a slider is doing, just go nuts. Go like, go to the, you know, both sides of the spectrum and see what's, what's happening, right? So we were right here and it was a little bit overexposed at least for for my taste so i will go a little bit down maybe 15 is enough contrast um uh, it's i think probably 10 will be good what else are we doing here the shadows i'm gonna lower the shadows a little bit 45 and then the dehaze that's what it gives that dreamy look I'm gonna sit in around 10. That's what I'm going to do. Um, when it comes to the texture, you see, again, if you go all the way in, it gives this photo a grit. Like, you know, it looks less satisfying to watch, to look at, right? So let's just keep it negative five for now. So it's a little bit soft, right? Um, Something that I'm not, people people seem to be a little bit afraid of the 10 curve. So just move that curve, do that S that a lot of people do. But again, don't be afraid to touch. We're messing around with the highlights, mid-tones, and the shadows. 
and then what's happening when I go, it gets that matte feel. I just want to go a little bit on that, not too much, nothing too crazy. Something that I'm not really proud is the fact that because this, you won't believe what this wedding was, but long story short, it was very impossible to take photos on this set on, on this setting. So I did cut the finger here. So because of the photo, I'm gonna add a mask and I'm gonna go with a linear gradient. I'm just gonna go from the top, from the bottom to the top. Nothing too crazy, just a little bit right here. And then I'm gonna expose this to almost one stop, almost. And then I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna find my dehaze tool and I'm gonna dehaze this about negative 20 let me see what's going on and I'm gonna go with clarity negative 30 that's gonna give me um, you know more of a dreamy look I might lower the exposure a tiny bit maybe 65 then here you can decrease the opacity and go crazy so I'm just gonna go 80 for now 80 yeah that works so let's go back to the edit and there's a couple spots here that uh, I will probably do some masking just to bring some of the some of the light back in. So I'll probably select the brush, make that brush small, and right here you can see that he has some. And I will expose that gently, nothing too crazy. Point three, it's more than enough, I think. Let me see, let's take it out. That's what's happening there. See how the eye, the eye socket, it's it's more vibrant, vibrant right now, it's, it's brighter. You can go up to, yeah, the, when, when it starts to look, yeah, when it starts to look kind of fake, that's when you want it to kind of like withdraw a little bit. So let's go 34, actually 0.40, should be good. Yep, that's pretty pretty good right there. Another thing that I might end up adding here, just to keep the creative flow going, I will probably add this. And again, don't be afraid to try new things. Never be afraid to try new things. So I'm gonna put this here a little bit. I'm gonna move towards, towards the yellowish. And same thing, I'm gonna go to the bottom, dehaze it a little bit. I'm gonna bring the clarity. Boom. That's where we at. This is pretty good. This is pretty good, right? I'm pretty, pretty happy with this. So let's go back. All right, let's go back. I'm gonna show you a before and after. This is what we started with. This is where we end up. I, th I think it's it's pretty good. What you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. However, there's one thing that I think we could do to elevate this photo a little bit. Um, the sharpening it's already at 65 with this uh, preset setting that I have, but because this it was a little bit of a self focus and all the haze that we have going on. So I'm gonna bring it back up to 75. Make sure those edges, yeah, that's that's a little bit better. Perfect. So that's about it. That's about it for this photo. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty happy with this. So one thing that I don't want you to do is to download a preset and just slap it into. The, the preset is just that. It's just a base point for you to start getting more familiar and more um, comfortable tweaking things around. One of the things that I learned when I started to study photography and color science 
is that you really need to know what is doing what in order to get the result that you want. So I know a lot of people get presets because they want to expedite their workflow or they want a specific look, and that's all great. I mean, I bought thousands of presets over the years. However, I will say this. The presets gave me, because of my background, gave me the opportunity to learn more, more about the colors and what's happening and what's doing what. And because of my experience as a graphic designer, and dealing with you know different colors and photos and video and all that stuff all these years, I kind of get a little bit of a you know I get I get a little bit more flexible with the colors and the way that I edit. However, I want you to understand something as well. Um, photography it's all about the way that you want to show people your art. Because let's say you saw a gas station, there was something you know there was something interesting about that gas station to you. It might not be for the people in town. It might not be for the people that see the photo. But you have the opportunity to bring that vision to life with your photo. But the photo alone sometimes doesn't really make justice. So however you, however you decide to color that image, however you decide to edit uh, and, and, and put, it, put the effort to make it look however you have it in your head, that's what people are going to remember. And that's what's the beauty about editing. That's the beauty about the art of photography, that you get to express your art with other people in a different way that they might never notice. And because of your take on it, now they have a very, now they have a better appreciation for it. So that's the photo. That's how we started. That's how we end, ended. So that's the photo. That's how we started. Um, that's how we started. That's how we ended. Pretty good, I think, in my opinion. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to grab the preset package on sale right now, please go and grab it. The link is in the description below. And on to the next one.